The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, company alive from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 15 minutes to go until that opening bell, and you got markets basically flat. A little mixed action this morning with the S&Ps up by two. We got the NASDAQ 100, quite the day yesterday. ASML shocking the market a little bit with chips, AI. We'll talk about that coming up. But you got the NASDAQ 100, positive by 34 points. That's about two tenths percent, 20,376. You got the Dow slightly in the red this morning, sitting just above 43,000. We'll put it back to a five-minute chart. There's your action. Yesterday, quite the fall off. And you got the Russell up 17 points, up almost eight-tenths percent in the Russell. How about Bitcoin, man? We're almost hitting 70000 again. Check it out. We got highs out there of 74000 Bitcoin, $68,000 coming at you. Crude. Talk about some pullbacks, man. Crude sitting at seventy dollars and sixty-three pennies. We're up by five pennies on the session right now. How about gold? Coming to you live with gold at twenty-seven hundred dollars right now, folks. You talk about a resurgent. You talk about it. And you jump over to notes and bonds. A little bit of higher price and lower yield. We got the ten-year right now up by about six ticks. You're trading at one twelve twenty on the ten-year, and that's correlating to a yield that is sitting right at 4%. 4% yield on that 10-year right now at 112.19, and you jump over to the dollar index, DXY. Pretty remarkable that this gold contract is pushing highs, right? We're pushing 2,700, and that's where we were trading when the dollar was at 100. I mean, our man Steve Rhodes, right? He loves pricing things in different currencies, and it is amazing when you look at where gold is trading in some of the others because even in a much stronger dollar where you've traded from 100 to 103.27 right now, the gold contract is still pushing all-time highs. Pretty remarkable. We jump over to the VIX. Now, what I will say is that we've been talking about that the VIX is a little bit elevated, especially at these high levels that the market is sitting in, right? We're sitting near all-time highs in the stock market, and you have the VIX chopping around near 20 even on a day like yesterday not a huge spike right we got about a dollar move upside in the vix that could have been a spooky day when you talk about ai you talk about nvidia right we jump over to asml as i was talking about and there's the action and it's going to continue today so they got a conference call i guess kicking off right now 9 a.m eastern time and you're going to be down another 25 dollars man you were at 874 yesterday and boy you talk about uh quite the announcement you trade down to 700 from 875 you take a look at this thing on a little bit of a longer term time frame we're back to where we were at the beginning of the year just like that we were all the way up to 1100 we're sitting at 700 you've given back 400 dollars just like that you take a look at the three-year weekly and yeah it is quite a pullback to the degree and it has reverberated magnificently you could say across this market you check out nvidia talk about drop off man how about ten dollars how about 250 billion dollars in market cap right is that what it is yeah 25 billion shares is what nvidia has outstanding and they trade ten dollars <whistles> yeah that is a move man we jump over to some of the magnificent seven everything was getting hit yesterday man apple from 237 we're trading at 233 you're basically flat right now slightly in the red on the session Jump over to Microsoft shares, down a bit. You saw the trade for them yesterday, man. Whew. Yeah, trading at 416 from 418. You're gonna open down about $2 from Microsoft. You jump over to Google shares this morning. Basically flat to slightly in the red for Google. 166 and change this morning. And Amazon actually got it back yesterday, right? And this is where it is intriguing. The AI, the chips, right? Jump over to AMD. You saw the slide from them yesterday. Jump over to Intel. Slide from them yesterday. They were trading lower, spiking on the overnight, 2151. We're at 2234. But it is pretty remarkable. You get a company like NVIDIA, and just like that yesterday, boom, $250 billion market cap shaved. And just like that, though, look at it. NVIDIA, you're up by $2. 
you're five dollars off the low. You're 125 billion dollar market cap of where you were trading up from where you were trading just yesterday morning. Pretty remarkable. About 11 a.m. that low, and yeah, 133 for Nvidia. And at this price tag, we're still talking about a 3.27 trillion dollar market cap for Nvidia. But you know, if you're unfamiliar, folks, ASML in terms of how quickly growth stocks can lose value when they come out with a shocking forecast there's a head up heads up for you right you're talking about 20 percent okay because when you reverberate and you need to shave multiples to that degree it is a problem and let's talk about it diverging fortunes of chip makers from ai asml yeah they lost 60 billion i just told you that nvidia was down 250 billion at one point yeah, orders for its chip-making machines, okay? Weak value is what they're talking about there, man. Broad sell-off, and yeah. AI-related demand remains robust. Recovery in other areas is lagging, and this trend is likely to last until 2025. You get different analysts giving their take out there. But yeah, I mean, you jump over, right? Taiwan Semiconductor, man. I mean, TSM. Now, we're all catching a little bit of a bid today. It is going to be interesting when we come back for the opening bell to see if yesterday's acceleration is going to rever reverberate through today. But so far, the market's handling it pretty well. You got the S&P's flat, NASDAQ 100 up 16, Dow mixed, and the Russell leading the way up by 16 points so far this morning. And yeah, it's a good comment in the YouTube Tigers down baseball. Ada, you know, you got to keep your eye on that gold contract in terms of what's happening with the dollar because... They're not going to go this way forever, right? One of them's going to move. You're not con you're not going to continue to have the dollar strengthen as gold goes up. Yes, that happens at certain periods of time. But you're looking at a chart here of the gold contract priced in U.S. dollars. Okay, so we live in a global economy, folks. You're pricing a commodity in one currency. If that currency strengthens then the price of the commodity in that currency is going to go down because you're buying it with a stronger currency, right? They are 1 million percent related, okay? So with that in mind, they can't go on like that forever, man, okay? Who's going to break, right? And they're saying, uh, is the dollar a dead cap bounce? Well, we're going to find out. It is, uh, but just remarkable strength on gold because they are related, and as we get this strength on gold, it is going to be interesting to see if the dollar... Um, excuse me, as we get the strength on the dollar, right, it's going to be interesting to see if gold can maintain these highs because we're basically at all-time highs, 2,700 right now. You look at a longer-term time frame chart of the gold contract, it's been a one-way trip, folks, basically for the last year, from 1,800 to 2,700. We're sitting there. Now, you compare that, okay, let's just put this on a daily going back a year, okay, now it doesn't quite get there, but you see it's a straight shot, we barely got any pullbacks on this chart, you compare that to the chart of what the dollar looks like, not even close, right, look at the strength that we have off of this bounce, and what's great is we're going to talk to our man Teddy Kegstad coming up at 40 past the hour, always a good conversation with Teddy, great day to have him on, where we got some action, as always, in the dollar, in gold, and we'll talk some currencies and commodities as we do, and let's take a peek at crude. 7051 for the price of crude. You had crude trading lower on the news that Iran is supposedly not going to hit the Iranian oil infrastructure. And that's not surprising, right? The, you have the, excuse me, that Israel, Israel is not going to hit the Iranian oil facilities. And of course, Israel comes out and says, wait a second, we're not beholden to any limits of, but nonetheless, crude, $70.58 right now. All right, what else do we got going on? It is still earnings season for the banks, and today we got Morgan Stanley, and they're joining the party, man. So, trading and banking windfall is how they put it here. Standout quarter, but not yet at peak, is how the CFO is sh shaping things. Um, wealth Management Group, $7.27 in revenue is the number there. Revenue from trading rising 13%. Yeah, big numbers, man. Higher than the analyst expectations, $64 billion in net new assets. Pre-tax margin, 28%. Got to love those margins, man. Standout quarter. That's how they put it. And you jump over. And there's the action this morning from Morgan Stanley. They're going to be up by about $4. And that's following that they've already gotten a little bit of a lift. Their last bank to 
to put it out there. They've traded higher when some of the other banks have given an indication that expectations should be increased. And there you have it. You got Morgan Stanley up another four dollars this morning. We jump around to some of those other banks. Bank of America, you know, open basically flat about forty two. JP Morgan, yeah, it's trading at about two twenty two, quite the acceleration for them last Friday when they kicked things off. And we got all the markets in the green now as we come into the opening bell. S and P's up by three. Nasdaq one hundred up by twenty three. Dow up by three, and the Russell leading the way up by 18. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come back. We'll talk some other equities moving today. Don't go away. I'm coming back for the opening bell. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading. Trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the stock market open for trading, 9.30, and we got a mixed market. Flat on the S&Ps to the tick. Flat to the tick in the NASDAQ 100 right now. Dow in single-digit territory in the Russell, though, with some strength, up by about 8 tenths percent. So we jump around. Jump around. What else we got going on? I'm going to start with Amazon. So Amazon, the headline there, they're going nuclear. Not surprising on the heels of Microsoft's deal to secure nuclear development for 20 years, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. They're going to invest half a billion dollars. It's a substantial sum of money. 
not exactly for Amazon, but it is a substantial amount of money. They've signed an agreement with Dominion Energy, Virginia's utility company, to explore the development of small module nuclear reactors, SMRs, as they're considered, near Dominion's existing North Anna nuclear power station. Yeah. We're on the forefront here. Energy is going to be everything for these data centers, man. And, um... Yeah. Amazon's the latest large tech company to go into nuclear. You got Google and Microsoft announcing similar plans. I wouldn't say they're similar, man. Microsoft, they've got the, the plan, right? They got a nuclear reactor, man. They got exclusive rights to it for 20 years when that thing starts opening, I think, in 2028, right? Um, but, yeah, so that's the case, and you're going to see it happen. And the amount of data that they're processing, as we all know, right, the amount of energy that they're going to be consuming, pretty remarkable. Yeah, we we see the need for gigawatts of power. Thinking of Back to the Future. 1.72 gigawatts, right? What is it? What is that number, Back to the Future? How many gigawatts? 1.21. I said 1.71. I was close. I love that movie. 1.21 gigawatts of power to travel through time. Check that out, right? In the movie Back to the Future, the DeLorean requires 1.21 gigawatts of power. Well, we're there, folks. We see the need for gigawatts of power in the coming years. This is not going to be enough wind and solar projects to be able to meet those demands. So nuclear is a great opportunity. And that is the CEO of AWS, uh, Matthew Garman. Also, the technology is really advancing to a place where those small module reactors, SMRs, where there's going to be a new technology that's going to be safe and that's going to be easy to manufacture in a much smaller form. I'm not sure it's that degree. It is safe easy to man manufacture in a much smaller form. It all matters if they're doing it right. And you're going to see this take place in terms of the public debate. But yes, technology has improved over the last decades, of course. Virginia is home to nearly half of all the data centers in the U.S. How about that, right? One area of northern Virginia, Data Center Alley, the bulk of which is in Loudoun, Loudoun County. 70% of the world's internet traffic travels through Data Center Alley each day they're going to put a nice big nuclear reactor i kid it's going to be a small module right dominion serves 3500 megawatts from 500 452 data centers man um but yeah look at this aws 35 billion dollars by 2040 when you start going all 15 years in the future man who knows what the world is going to be like uh i would imagine that that number could even be light man 35 billion dollars over the next 16 years does not seem like a lot of money in terms of sometimes what they are doing with these data centers the capex going on on companies like amazon uh, but that's just across virginia is what they're talking about so nonetheless nuclear coming at you man this market, slightly in the red. We see how the big dogs are doing. You got Apple shares. Ooh, they get a little dip at the open there. Down about 1%. Amazon, they're trading a little lower as well. Down about 8 tenths percent. ASML, let's see how they're doing following yesterday's disaster. Down about 3.2% following that. You jump over to NVIDIA. They are holding on to the gains this morning, getting back some of those losses. It is pretty remarkable that you got NVIDIA basically just trading where we were on Friday. Meanwhile, you get that shocker of news of ASM, ASML reverberating through this market. All right, we keep our eye on yields this morning. Yeah, we might be under 10, uh, 4 percent right now. Where are we sitting? No, nope, we're sitting right at 4 percent is where we are on that 10-year. Yeah, 112.19 with the 10-year sitting right at 4%. Now, you talk about yields. We talk about mortgages, all right? As we've seen rates and the 10-year rise, we've seen the dollar strengthen, and you're seeing mortgage rates climbing again. 6.52%, the highest since early August. A little bit of a pullback there right after August. But that is the contract rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage rising 16 basis points. And that is the week ended October 11th is the number there. And you see the uptick. All right. And you obviously see when you get an uptick like that, refinancing index takes a little bit of a dive. The purchase applications index takes a little bit of a dive. And yeah, we're approaching 6%. We're back to 6.5, just like that. Two-week rise of 38 basis points, the most since early of 2023 is how they put it there. And they're looking at this numbers when we're rising to almost 7.5%. But yeah, high end mortgage rates. We'll see where the Fed is going to go from there. 
but that is always a food conversation, to put it lightly, right? All right, what else we got? We talked ASML. Yeah, this one's an interesting one from Bloomberg, talking about uh, Neuralink. And they're talking about their neurosurgeon they have in here. Matthew McDougal. Dougal? Dougal. Matthew McDougal. Um, he's the main neurosurgeon there. And it is intriguing when you talk about, you know, we're always talking about Tesla, okay? Tesla was positive today. Let's see if they're holding it. Ooh, they give it back a little bit, okay? They were positive in the pre-market, but nonetheless, they're basically flat this morning. But you talk about trust. I talk about trust when you're talking about EVs. You're talking about self-driving vehicles, jumping into a vehicle where the, the car is driving itself. Boy, you better believe that you're going to need some trust when you're talking about brain surgery with neurosurgeons. And um, what they're talking about is that here's the guy that's going to provide the stability in terms of the stability um, as opposed to Musk in that context. But I'll post this one in the Tiger's Den because it's an interesting one. Uh He's the second guy from the left here. He recently appeared. He's taken a more visible role in this company. And, hey, it is pretty interesting, man. As somebody myself just had brain surgery in April, right, thankfully went well uh, over that one. Uh, but it is intriguing in terms of the level of trust that you have to have in that degree. But they talk about this, and you talk about the forefront of technology, man. Uh, they got a team of surgeons, and, yeah. He's the man in charge. He's been there for seven years, and he's just beginning to take a much more visible role in that company as technology and the brain begin to merge. Pretty remarkable, man, to put it lightly, right? All right. Yeah, talking about money, we'll tie it into a little sports. I was reading this one this morning, man. So this one's out from early from the journal. Uh Postseason baseball, there's nothing like playoffs, man, whether it's playoff hockey, playoff baseball, right? Playoff football, my goodness. Um, but, boy, I saw this headline. I said, is that real? Yankees haven't won it in 15 years. Time flies. But, yeah, they haven't won a pennant since 2009. 2009, they haven't won a pennant. But this could be the year that that changes. But you're talking about $3 billion, man. $3 billion. Um, yeah. 2009, the last time, a decade and a half since their last pennant. Pretty remarkable. You can spend that kind of money as the Yankees. And for 15 years, it just shows you how hard it is and how much volatility and, and um, how much variance there is sometimes with games in terms of you get the best guys. But there's a lot of variance. There's a lot of team com components that go in there. But I found it pretty remarkable that 15 years had passed. Now, I'm a Red Sox fan. So shame on me for bringing it up that the Yankees haven't been there in 15 years, but nonetheless. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're going to be coming back. We're going to be talking to our man Teddy Kegstat. We're going to talk some Forex. We're going to talk some commodities. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. 
Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P slightly in the red this morning. You got the S&P futures right now, negative by six points, trading at 58.56. We got that dollar index right now, up 220, yeah, 22 pennies, 103.25. To talk about some of the action, folks, as we do every Wednesday at 40 past the hour, we're going to jump over to our man Teddy Kegstat. And folks, if you haven't checked it out yet, Teddy writes an outstanding forex report, the Tiger Forex Report, out every Monday morning. He puts out updates throughout the week. You can subscribe right now. It's only $97 from the month. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee. You get one of his archived webinars in there as well. You got nothing to risk and everything to gain, folks. And don't forget, he's got some outstanding webinars out there as well. Capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads and Japanese candlestick pattern, stock and option strategies, both under the services tab over there at TFNN. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Glad you guys are back in action this week. Thank you. Yeah, very fortunate um, ourselves. Boy, this area, you know, we got hit back to back, as, as everybody knows, because it was just um, so, you know, captivating in terms of these two storms. And um, we're bouncing back. We're fortunate to have power, and, and I appreciate it, man. But uh, so... Where do you want to kick it off, man? We got we got quite a market right now. Whether you're talking about yields, we got a little bit of a, a bounce in the dollar off the lows of about 100. We're sitting at 103. What are you looking at in this market most of all, Teddy? Where do you want to kick things off? Actually, I think yields is where we got to take a real big focus right now. I mean, okay. the low that we set on Monday was uh, really nice. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are puzzled. I'm not surprised about the fact that yields have been creeping higher even in the midst of a half a point rate cut. Um, you got to realize that the market has been trending lower, meaning higher yields since, what was it, uh, the end of September? You know, that's yeah. when we uh, capped out. So and that was before the meeting, you know. So we've had a nice slow extension. I think what it shows is that the market actually requires higher rates, um, no matter what the Fed wants to do. You know, I've been saying for a long time they're on the reverse end of the cycle, you know. So, but it is what it is. So they're doing what they're doing, right? Um, the half a point, I think, was overly aggressive in September. Uh, are they going to do another half again? Well, they could, but I think that would be really shooting themselves in the foot. And I think the market's already showing that because we had a half a point factored in already. You know, so now the question is, most people would say they're probably going to raise a, quarter, a cut a quarter point in the next meeting. Okay, so we would have to go and take out the highs, which we may very well do. We may have planted the low for the next month and a half or so. But I would be very cautious where I think you're going to see some vacuum moves to the upside, and then you're going to see some nice sell-offs again. So and even if they, whether they do a quarter point or a half a point, wherever we buffer into those new highs, which I, I mean, I can't see why we wouldn't, you know, over the next uh, few weeks. Um, once we do that, I think you're going to see some extreme sell-offs, meaning that the market, no matter what, even though they know that, and this is good for the banks because their, their cost of, for, uh, for lending is going down, and they're still keeping up 
the, the bid is still staying strong as far as how much yields are going to uh, stay firm. You know, so that means the spread for the banks as far as profitability is very, very good for them, at least in the short run. And I think that's what you're seeing in, in, right now, and it's reflective by the price market pricing, both in bank stocks and also how interest rates are moving. You know, as far as the market rate is concerned, the Fed's going to do what the Fed's going to do. The Fed could cut a whole point. It doesn't mean that the yields are going to drop a whole point, and especially if they were to. I think you would see yields definitely start to correct back towards the median, but then they would already be factoring a half a point raise eventually. You know what I mean? Where you may, may not even rally up in the 10-year or the 30-year to even justify that fair value with where the Fed is at. So I would be very cautious with the rallies on that. And I think that that's something that's helping to keep the dollar index from um, faltering, if you will, because there's every reason in the world for the dollar to be weak right now and weakening over the next few months. You know, and I think you will see that reflective once yields start to retract again, which they're going to. You know, the closer we get to a Fed meeting, I would say we're going to get at least close to those highs set back at the end of September, beginning of October, which would have the bonds above 127. They're trading at 121.14 right now, which, by the way, that low we had was just shy of our tar downside target that I was looking for in the Tiger Forex report. So we didn't hit it. Can we still go back and try and make those lows? Maybe, but I doubt it. I think we're getting this each day as we get closer to the Fed meeting. That low is more solid, at least in the short run. You know, I mean, could we take it out? Anything could happen. Um, but I don't think that, that would happen unless they thought that the Fed wasn't going to make a move, you know, at the okay. next meeting. So, which if nice. in case if they didn't do that, if the Fed didn't make a move at all at the next meeting, then I don't see interest rates actually pulling back too much at all compared to yeah. where they were a month and a half ago. It is pretty remarkable how it seems like every 30 days or 60 days, the whole world changes in terms of how the market is pricing the expectation of rate cuts. Um, you, you referenced the 50 basis point cut. and Yeah, things have changed dramatically already from where they were pricing, where the market was. That seems like maybe a little bit excessive. And uh, I think in hindsight, yeah, they probably go 25 if they know what they do now. But it is remarkable how quickly things keep changing. Um, what do you think? Can I, can I jump to gold? Because, you know, we sure. got a lot of gold bugs out there, of course. And I just want to get your take because it's remarkable how well gold has actually held up. And we'll, we can talk crude after this, too, because I know crude's really, you know, sure. 70 bucks. But it is remarkable how well gold has priced up, uh, held up, priced in dollars when you have that bounce from about 100 to 103 in the dollar. And you still got gold pushing all time highs. You got any takes on gold as we're pushing 2700 yet again this morning up by 19 bucks on the session? You know, a few weeks ago, we had that conversation where I started off about how I ran into a buddy of mine when we were watching a Bears game. And uh, that was the biggest thing is like, what is your long term perspective? I'm like, well, I'm like, buy gold. I'm like, silver, not so much, but maybe a little bit. But, I, and, but as a whole, I'm like, buy bonds. You know, I'm like, right now, I'm like, I told him, my like, bonds are actually getting a little cheaper. I'm like, that's a natural reaction for what's going on because the market wants higher rates, not lower rates. But they're not going to get yeah. that. There's going to be that spread. So buying bonds and definitely gold for the long term, not long, long term, I'm saying over the next sure. three to four months, especially okay. we get to get we get through the election, no matter who gets elected, it doesn't matter, and then getting to Inauguration Day. Because no matter who okay. gets elected, that's definitely going to be where you may see a, a, a peak in gold, or you may see okay. a, a correction come off of that, or you may even see a major acceleration. You can see, you nice. can probably see gold literally um, come the sec end of the second quarter next year, be probably every bit of 30% higher than where it is today. Oh, you you know? got you got those ears perked so, up and listening on um, the airwaves, Teddy. But that it, did also it. Could be, it also <laughs> could, it could also be it could have also fallen back from highs to where it is now, come sure. February. You know, in which okay. case, then I think you would see a, a peak in gold for a while. Okay. And it has been quite a run, man. I was talking about, you know, the last year where, I mean, you know, you pull it back one year, you're at 1900, but you don't have to go much further than that, man, to get the lowest 1600 two years ago, I guess. Yeah. 1600, the last two years, 1600 up to 2700 in almost a straight shot over those two years. Pretty remarkable. Uh, we got about crude. one minute left. How about crude, Teddy? What do we got going on with crude, man? $70 and 50 cents. We had a spike. We got some geopolitical risks. Of course, they're saying they're not going to bomb. They're not saying, but the news out right. there that maybe the Iranian oil facilities will not get taken out. What do you think of crude at $70.44 right now? You know, crude was trading at 76 on Friday, and now it fell down into our critical support band that we had in the Tiger Forex report. It actually spiked below it yesterday and even uh, today. It's trading just below it. Below $71, I think you're going to have a lot of um, support there. I don't think you're going to have heavy okay. selling. So I'm looking for a range trade up to 78 
I like it, man. $70. Nice round number. Teddy, mm-hmm. I appreciate it so much. Folks, check out that Tiger Forex report. Check out some of his webinars right at TFNN. Teddy, have a great week, man. Thank you so much Take as care, always. Tommy. I look forward to talking to you next Wednesday, brother. All right. Take care. We'll be right back, folks. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Always a great conversation with Teddy. Appreciate him coming on. That gold, right? How about it, man? 30% maybe, but we'll see where we go. It's been quite a run. Don't forget to check out that Tiger Forex report. He puts out an outstanding report every Monday, folks. 30-day risk-free guarantee. Can't go wrong. S&Ps, negative by 7 as we kick it off. NASDAQ 100 trading a little lower. Let's see what's driving some of the action. How about Apple? Down by 1.5% to kick off the session. Microsoft, 1.5%, right? Google, Seven tenths in the negative right now. Amazon, about a half a percent in the negative right now. NVIDIA shares in the positive, but they've given back some of the gains. You got NVIDIA up by about six tenths percent, 132.48 so far this morning. We check back in on Morgan Stanley following their earnings this morning. Ooh, accelerating. Now, you you talk about it, man. Expectations were high here. Okay? They were the last bank to, to come out. The other banks had driven the expectations higher, and Morgan Stanley, even on a raised bar, Beats and they are up 7.3% right now. And how about it, man, on this chart from 69 bucks to 120 in the span of one year? As Teddy was talking about, those banks are in a good position right now, man. Bank of America up by another 1.6% right now. JP Morgan up by three tenths percent right now. City, look at this, up by 2.3. 
And we'll finish it up with Wells Fargo, up by 1.6% so far this morning. We check back in on that gold contract. They give back some of the gains. We were approaching 2,700. You got a little bit of a turn there. We hit 2,702 at 935. The last 20 minutes, we're down a bit. We keep our eye on yields, which is driving a lot of the action. Yeah, we're sitting right at 4% on the 10-year right now. We keep our eye on the dollar with the dollar index at 103.29. We jump over to the dollar yen, 149.30. And that weak yen, man. Strong dollar. Weak yen, 149. Now, yeah, you're you're well off 161, but on a longer-term basis, man. This would be the level that we had been pushing, right, on that dollar yen. So watch that level because 150, that's where we turned in 2022. That's where we turned in 2023 on the dollar yen. And, yeah, that is um, you got way above it. But if this is a critical level here and you start seeing, so that's as weak as it is. And if you see the yen trade lower from here, that is going to mean yen strength, which would co co um, correlate to a stronger, uh, a weaker dollar, excuse me, as it all relates. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great Wednesday. Stay tuned. Our man Basil Chapman, he's coming up next with the Tiger Technician.